Conserving energy is one of our primary concerns, isn't it, Doctor? Human beings have fallen in love with technology. And no wonder. Technology has made our lives better, easier, safer, more convenient, and more predictable. I love you. Samsung Chipper, m a s h i m o j u k i The reality of peak oil, population growth, climate change, and emerging new technologies mean that we must and can advance to a new revolution that will leave fossil fuels behind. Climate deniers funded by fossil fuel interests use fear to block meaningful change, commonly deploying this argument. Which leaves us with only one immediate and effective way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To simply cease all economic activity, all commerce in the world. To return to that mean and meager state from which carbon based energy delivered us in the first place dirty, smelly, difficult, and short lives. See, if you cut back or stop using fossil energy, you'll be shunned by your tribe, will probably have to find a cave to live in. And most likely get eaten by a dinosaur. But is that the reality for the pioneers who are actually moving into the future? It's over 90 degrees outside, but inside Kelly and Matt Grokoff's Ann Arbor home, it's a comfortable 72 degrees. And that comfort isn't costing them a penny on their energy bill. In March of 2011, we paid our last energy bill. Ever. The Grokoff's April energy bill was a minus $63.34. It's just great to be able to have this comfortable environment and, and not feel guilty about it in any way. On top of the metal roof, the Cripes installed solar panels to produce electricity and solar tubes to bring light inside the house. Some of the things that we've done in this house are so simple. Then I don't understand why everybody doesn't do it. Our electric bills went down to almost nothing. They were just a few dollars.、Um, but then, as the summer has started to creep in and the sun has gotten a little brighter and a little more sunshine, our electric bills have actually dipped into the negative range. Basically, you're producing more electricity than you're using. That's, that's exactly correct.、Mm -hmm. To simply cease all economic activity. See how it works? You're being manipulated with a phony choice. What I wanted to do was to build an ecologically sound house that wasn't super expensive. There are sensors throughout the building saying what's happening where in terms of heat, humidity, airflow. So, what does all this technology do for the heating costs? What heating costs? How much less would we pay for、uh, heating costs?、Um, we're thinking almost nothing. Dirty, smelly, Difficult and short lives. If you sin against the collective, you will be punished. Playbull tells me Geos will be the nation's largest net zero energy community. By relying on geothermal and solar systems, the homes actually produce all the energy they need. What makes it possible is these homes are incredibly airtight. With state of the art insulation. We reduce the total energy requirements of these homes compared to existing building codes by about 75%. It will be the first building in New York City which is truly zero energy. So it's a house where energy flows into Con Edison's grid and comes back out of Con Edison's grid. But at the end of the year, the tally. Is zero. We're going to reduce the energy consumption of this building by 40%. You know, we're doing actually some very common sense type things. So, in the Empire State Building, one of the things they're doing is replacing all their windows. It's actually an incredibly smart thing to do. High R value windows are built in a unique way. They have multiple chambers separated by suspended film. That clear film goes in, it goes in with a special set of spacers, other sealants, and Then we fill it with gas. That further improves the R value to get all the way to 
100% improvement. And someday we'll probably be using some of that electricity for electric cars. Hopefully. Hopefully. To plug them in. Plug them in and charge them up. Were you a hippie? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Renewable energy within the Army is, is relatively new. Uh, the Army has long known that logistically, in order for us... Us? Now I'm confused. This guy works for the U.S. Army, but he looks and talks like some whacked-out hippie from the 70s. To provide the energy that we need to the points where it has to go in these remote spots, that the cost of that energy is exceptionally high, not only in the material costs, but also in lives. Uh, right now, what we're doing is putting up a power shade. It uh, has flexible solar panels on the top and gives us uh, enough power to run small electronics such as lighting systems and laptop computers. It also provides shade over the tent structure. Experimenting with this equipment in Africa proved that it could reduce the internal temperature of the tent 7 to 10 degrees. All the LED lights in the entire tent use just 91 watts, less than one single old-fashioned incandescent bulb. It's a no-brainer when it comes to efficiency. Dirty, smelly, difficult, and short lives. Scary. It's scary. The eco-friendly bells and whistles on this home are fascinating, but one of the most interesting things is who owns it. Importing oil uh, is a mugs game. Former CIA director and national security expert James Woolsey. Well, there are all sorts of good reasons to not waste energy and to uh, have your home be comfortable and to uh, produce uh, electricity in a, with renewables. It's scary. Or uh, in a, any other clean way. Woolsey has been sounding the alarm over oil dependence for decades. In interviews. About, I guess it's eight out of ten of the world's leading oil exporters are dictatorships or autocratic kingdoms. In speeches. We need not just to buy less foreign oil, but to undermine oil's monopoly on transportation. Even on late night TV. Uh, shouldn't we just use all the oil up and then start working on an alternative? Because <laughs> then, then there'll be a that's, real call for it, right? That's one approach. That's one approach. The problem is, as we run out, more and a larger and larger share comes from the Middle East. So if there are terrorist attacks there or governments decide they don't like us or something, they can uh, make it very expensive for them. That's why changes here are more than an effort to protect his wallet. They're a baby step, perhaps, toward protecting the nation. The principal issue here is not just moving away from foreign oil, it's moving away from oil, period. Caution, dangerous thoughts. They honestly equate every gallon of fuel that is saved to blood from our American service people. I think the thing that impresses me most with my experience with the military as a uh, Marine and soldier and now working as a Department of the Army civilian is the way the military seems to be just a little bit ahead of the population as a whole. Again, we've got the resources, we've got the ability to do it, we've, we've also got the spirit of innovation. Conserving energy is one of our primary concerns, isn't it, Doctor? We've seen in two videos that using a lot less energy and moving to renewables is not only possible, but desirable. And it's being done to help real people live more comfortable and secure lives. But the big question that a lot of people ask is, okay, how much will it cost, and how do we pay for it? I'll be treating those questions and coming up with answers in the next edition of Renewable Energy Solution of the Month. Da, 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 da.